Hi everyone, today's topic in the top 10 learning design principles is assessment. And with me today, I have Chris Brown with Opinium. Hi Chris, so excited to touch on this important topic. Can you share with me what we are looking at today? Hey Lisa, uh, appreciate you inviting me on here today. I'm excited to be talking about assessments. And and yes, there's uh, oh, there's so many things that we could be um, talking about on this topic. But here's a couple of the key drivers for learning design. You should always include the formative assessments throughout e-learning uh, to check learners' understanding and identify areas for improvement. Also, summative assessments at the end of the course can evaluate overall mastery of the content. So those who aren't familiar with the terms formative and summative, can you elaborate? Yeah. Formative assessments, they check for understanding of content uh, that's being consumed. I like to compare this to a car's dashboard. You can look at the dashboard as you're driving to see how you're doing along the way. On the other hand, most of our clients use summative assessments at the end of a course test or certification um, because it looks at past learning. So can you show me what this looks like in a learning plan? Yeah. Here's a course that you can find on Opinions Community um, about video coaching. Uh, see how this course is organized into sections, starting with getting started with video coaching. And this last section here is called Time to Get Certified. And when you're going through sections, you'll find that each section ends with a short quiz. So note that this is named check for understanding versus a test or a quiz. That naming is intentional. This quiz is intended to be self-check for learners. It's designed to give feedback to the users on their answers so that they learn from the assessment itself. Thus, this intent is formative assessment so that the learners can go back and explore what they did not understand uh, before continuing on to the next section. Now let's look more closely at the last section of the learning plan called time to get certified so you'll see there there are two activities in here one is another quiz but we have called it video coaching certification exam this summative assessment covers content through the whole learning plan so that makes sense so you put quizzes for each chapter so to speak and then a final exam at the end Exactly. Um, and it uses the Opinium quiz learning object. So for this assessment tool, what are the key features you would call out for learning admins to master? Sure. So not only should the assessments be in the right place in learning, um, but you need to consider which types of questions might be best. So, for example, multiple choice is pretty standard, but there are many question types to consider. Um, for example, matching. Also, you don't want to forget to harness question feedback in your quizzes, especially if those quizzes are designed to be formative in nature. That's great advice, Chris. So let's get back to that example learning plan. In this learning plan, there is a lot of usage of quizzes, but can you tell us about this last item here called show what you know? Sure. Well, that's calling out uh, to a new assessment tool that we call video coaching. So many of our clients are starting to add video coaching into their learning programs because it allows learners to demonstrate or show that they understand the subject. So can you give me an example of a use case for this? Sure. So perhaps the training is about a new product and you want the salesperson to record a three minute video, for example, that asks them to tell or demo the top benefits for the new product. Uh, so the assessment itself is not just a quiz, but something that makes um, them show that they know how to present about the product to a potential customer. So another example might be a technician needs to show a screen share reviewing a completed project, an implementation, or a procedure in order to get a certification. So how is this assessed? Sure. Well, once the learner submits the assignment, a reviewer can use a rubric, for example, to score and give feedback. So this feedback, um, it can include video feedback as well as an actual timestamp feedback. It can also allow for self-assessment and peer review as well. So video coaching seems super flexible. So let's move on to another assessment topic. 
So you've shown us quiz objects and video coaching assignments. Are there other ways to create interactive assessments? Yeah, so we do have clients who create content and export it as SCORM. This can also have embedded assessments. So the nice thing is that it's a great way to keep learners engaged by requiring some interactivity before continuing. The cons is that unlike the quiz learning object and video coaching, that data on how learners respond is a bit harder to track. So assessment and SCORM is more for engaging the learner in the content and the quiz learning object is better for tracking responses. Yep, exactly. So before we end, are there any other ways you've seen learning admins use assessments in their learning? Yeah, there's uh, the ability native in opinion to build interactions inside the video itself. So can you show me some examples of this? Absolutely. So if you upload a video to Opinium, you'll find that there's a tab called Interaction. One type of interaction is called a single choice set. So you can, for example, say at a certain timestamp in that video, you're going to want to pause it to see if the viewer gets it. So here's uh, what that interaction would look like to the user. I like that. Even as a learner, that type of assessment really helps keep me focused and reinforces any key messages. So thank you, Chris, for your time in sharing some best practices for assessments with Opinium. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Lisa. So that's a wrap on assessments. Our next topic is about learning on mobile devices.